In the last couple of videos, we looked at how we could implement a card class and a shuffle deck class using object-oriented programming principles. We also looked at how we could make some of the operators like less than or greater than or print or length operate more intuitively on our instantiated objects from these classes. From that, we learned how we might implement a game like playcards.py, which takes two cards off of the deck and compares them, and whoever has the higher rank wins the game. We did not actually implement this game, but it would be a useful exercise if somebody wanted to take what we talked about in the first two videos and try to implement such a game as this with this sort of behavior or even see how it might be done using three or four players. For this video we're going to talk not so much about play cards about this card comparison game but take a look at playing five card draw and how this script can be made more intuitive and readable using the object-oriented programming principles that we discuss in the first two videos. My deck is no longer a part of this directory. We now have card deck, which has many of the classes, well, which has all of the classes that we looked at in the first video. We have another module called Poker Rules, which we'll take a look at as well. And both of these get used in play5carddraw.py. There's also the PyCache directory. Don't worry about that directory. That is a directory that Python creates when running object-oriented uh, object oriented programming scripts when running scripts using object-oriented programming. Let's look at card deck and see what has changed since we were implementing this as mydeck.py. We still have club, diamond, heart, spade. We still have suits and we still have values. And we still have the enumeration of card ranks and a dictionary that assigns card ranks to certain values of cards. Card looks very similar, except now we have overridden more methods than we did in the previous video. We've now overridden the equals operator, the not equals operator, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, and less than or equal to. So now we're able to compare two cards using any of these operators using these methods. Shuffle deck, nothing has been changed. Our overridden length operator is still a part of shuffle deck. Card deck will be imported by the module Poker Rules. So let's look at Poker Rules. This should look very familiar from the card card deck module, where we had a card rank enumeration, but now we have a hand rank enumeration. These are all of the possible hands one could have in five card draw. And we've given them an integer value. We've given them an intuitive name and an integer value for comparison based on which hand is greater than another. A royal flush beats everything. A straight flush beats everything but a royal flush. Four of a kind beats everything but a straight flush and a royal flush and so on, down to having only a high card. 
If you're unfamiliar with the rules of poker, you may want to take a minute to look up some of them just to become more familiar with these terms. We now have a class called Poker Hand. We've already seen what a card object looks like. A poker hand, at its most basic definition, stores five of these card objects. We can instantiate it with a player and cards. Cards is a list of five cards, as we'll see when we look at five card draw. The player is turned into a string for printing purposes, but it's just a number. One, two, three. The rank is set by a method called find rank. Helper methods in Python are by convention given an underscore before the name. And that is to say we don't intend to use these methods except internally to this class, and we'll see those methods below. So the rank of this hand is found by find rank, and the high card of this hand is found by high card. You'll see down here, we've overridden the string method, and down here where we've overridden these operators such that we can compare hands, we're using both the rank and the high card operators. And the reason for this is because if two hands are equal in rank, say that we have two straights, then we'll be able to determine the, win to determine the winner by looking at the high card. So if one player has a straight of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the other player has a straight of 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, the player with 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 wins, and we'll be able to determine this by looking at the high card. I won't go over the rest of these methods, but you can pause the video and look at how they're implemented to get an idea of how we're comparing hands. We have an auxiliary function called cards in sequence that determines whether the five cards in the hand are part of a sequence, a continuous sequence, and this is useful for determining whether or not a player holds a straight. We have a helper method called value counts that simply returns the count of each rank in the hand. So if a player holds three kings and two queens, we'll be returning a list of length two, whose values are three and two. Now we find the rank. We need to know the suits and the ranks of all the cards, and then we can use this method to go down a list of circumstances that will return the value in hand rank that the player has in their hand. So these are the conditions for a royal flush, these are the conditions for a straight flush, and so on. And notice how by using the other methods inside this class, the other helper methods, reading the code of find rank, the code we're looking at now, becomes much easier, much more intuitive if the cards are in sequence and there is only one suit in the hand, the length of the set suits equals one, we have a straight flush. That's much easier to read than if we had done all of that calculation as part of the if. And this goes all the way down to returning that the player has a high card if they have none of the above. And then we can determine the highest card. The highest card, in some ways, depends on the hand that the player is holding. If they have four of a kind, for instance, we're only concerned about four of what kind of card. 
if they have a tie with another player who has another four of a kind. So if they have four twos and an ace, we're not concerned about the ace, we want to return that they have a two as their high card. And that's what this method, that is the method of this behavior. Wow, the behavior of this method. And we need slightly different behaviors for slightly different hands. If they only have a high card, we return that high card. So the takeaway from this is that by determining the rank and the high card of each hand, we can have a very intuitive way of comparing card hands to one another. So now let's see where this comes into play. Because we've done a lot of the hard work inside the card deck module and the poker rules module, our actual script for five card draw can be written fairly short and fairly intuitively. So we'll say that by default a game of five card draw has four players. We need a deck of cards and we're only going to play with one deck of cards which gives us a max of 10 players. Ideally there could be a check for whether we have just 10 players or under. You can imagine how that would be implemented. We deal the cards. Hands is a list of lists for something we don't care about in the range of players, so one list per player. And then for I in range 5, for hand and hands, we append a card to that hand. So we're appending a card to each hand a total of five times. So we now have five lists, or rather, a list of five cards for each player in the game. And then we simply transform those lists into poker hand objects, which we looked at in the poker rules module. The player is defined as the number by which that hand is enumerated, and we add 1 to it so that instead of player 0, we have player 1, and so on. For each hand, we're going to print the hand. We can print the player. We can print rank.name. This is the way to access, say, the text royal flush in the enumeration card rank. And then we print the hand. And notice all we have to do is print hand. And again, that's because we've overridden the string method inside poker hand. We have to account for ties, and that's why this part of the code has a little bit of length. We start with an empty list, winners, and none is the winning hand. Then we iterate through the hands. If there is no winning hand, or the current hand is greater than the winning hand, and remember, this is possible because we overrode the greater than method. Then we set the winning hand to hand, and winners is a list containing only the winning hand. But if the hand equals the winning hand, and this is possible because we overrode the equals operator, then we have another hand to append to winners. And then we print whether the player wins or whether it's a tie. Player one wins with a pair of kings.